What's up guys? Uh, Nick Hewitt here. I got a video tutorial on setting up um, object-oriented database access in PHP and then also using the active record design pattern. Um, those of you who don't know all that much about uh, PHP or object-oriented programming, um, I would recommend going to check out uh, the new Boston. Uh, Bucky there does a really good job explaining uh, the basics of PHP and he starts getting into uh, object-oriented stuff so definitely check out his videos. He does a very good job uh, setting all that stuff up um, and I think you guys will learn quite a bit. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking the foundation that he's set up and kind of expanding upon it. So I've got a database object which I use to uh, do all my database instructions and then I'm also uh, using what's called the active record design pattern where you are basically creating an object which is modeled after your um, your uh, table in your database and it's an easy way to um, manip uh, manipulate data. So I'll show you really quick what uh, what this is all about. Right now I have a table set up in my database so if I just run this again you'll see that I have one user um, it's basically me put into the database. Well what if I want to um, this is the code that I have set up so I have my database object which I'll open that really quick and this is what we're going to be creating um, it's actually not all that much and it actually uses the singleton uh, design pattern so you make sure you only have one instances uh, one instance of it open at one time uh, this kind of cuts down on redundant connections and um, eliminates having to have multiple connections open um, it just makes things a little bit easier to manage uh, the next thing is the table class which is the base for all of our um, all of our uh, code that we're going to be using um, for adding uh, new or, or expanding our uh, our table list. So, um, and then we also have a user table, which uh, a user class, which is what I am using to insert the information. Um, and then again, if we wanted to create another table, which I'll get into, I have a page class, which if I wanted to add pages, we'll just have our title, our content, and our table. Um, and protected, don't you don't really need this. Um, this is if you are expanding upon uh, or it it plays into the whole inheritance thing um, but you don't really need protected unless you want to uh, create getter and setter methods um, you can just do var and it'll work the same and this will actually be accessible outside of your class which is probably the way that I'm going to do it in the video um, and I probably will actually switch over to that once I create my framework uh, so I'll just put this back in. Alright, and then the last thing is my bootstrap file which basically loads everything. So it includes all of our classes, it creates an instance of the database, and this inst get instance um, method is getting called uh, because it is a static method. So if you come back over here, it's, you see static function get instance, and basically what this does is if the class or the, the static method instance here has nothing then it calls the uh, constructor method which is private so anywhere outside of this class is not going to be seen so you have to be inside of the class um, those of you who want to learn a little bit more about the singleton design pattern do some research online um, but that's probably the best that I'm going to get at, at explaining it uh, so I'm, I know this video is going to be over 15 minutes so I'm going to try and uh, rock it through it and hopefully get you guys uh, getting t used to using this kind of stuff. Um, it's a lot. It's, it's really helpful and I've actually have switched all my code over to this and other projects that I've been working on and I'm trying to get uh, the other programmers that I work with at the college that I work for um, to use this kind of programming methodology rather than having uh, just uh, queries that we run so you hand coding the queries um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, show you what this code does so if I go back to my index page um, right now I have first name la well F name L name and email which are three uh, three pieces of code or three variables that I'm inserting into my user excuse me user object and data is just an associative array so f name if we look back over at our user class 
f name here is associated with a variable and the way that I have my code set up is it's going to grab that variable in the class and as long as they match up with a field in the database it's going to insert it and update that information um, this will make more sense once we get into the code but I just want to give you a heads up on what's going on right now so I have my get instance object so I have my database connected uh, or created then I'm connecting to my database creating a new user object and I'm creating an associative array with all my data that I want to insert into the object so and then the last piece is my user object I'm running a bind method which is basically it's taking this data object that I have created here or this data array and it's assigning these values so f name is getting assigned to the f name value inside the user class um, and then finally it runs the stored procedure which builds the uh, SQL query and then it passes it over to my database and then it gets stored um, so if I run that I gotta change some of this so if I wanna go we'll do Joe Johnson and email I'll just go JJ at Hewitt Media Design so if I save that and you're not going to see anything put out on the screen so before I, I get into that if I do just do a select all from users you're just going to see one record in it but if I refresh the page running that script you should see a second there we go so we got Joe Johnson and uh, I haven't created the, the delete but the delete would work pretty similar um, if I, I just pass in the ID that I want and I'll actually switch this over uh, let's go back over to Eclipse Oh, computer's running a little slow tonight come on there we go so if I wanted to I got my user object I don't want to pass anything in let's say I just want to um, load everything in my uh, user object so I just want to grab information from the database and I want to assign it to the variables inside that object I created a load method which if I put in two for the ID so I'm passing in an ID um, if I hit save I don't think I have those public so I'm gonna have some problems with that so uh, let's see if this will work I'm gonna change all these to public I believe this will work Alright, so I'll save that, come back over here, and from my user object, I'm going to echo out user f name, and I'm going to concat break. Actually, I'm going to put in a space there, and I'm going to do user l, whoops, l name then I'm going to cat a break onto it so if I save that rerun it what should happen is I'm pulling the first name and the last name entries from whatever gets loaded into that user object so if I refresh it you get Joe Johnson but if I want to pull the first record which will be me Nicholas Hewitt then I just change that ID so instead of two I pass in one save it come back over here and refresh and then I get pulled up um, so I just want to give you guys a heads up on what's going on here and I'm gonna try and do it in, in two or three videos um, I get another nine minutes so I'm probably just gonna dive into the database and then switch over to um, the actual table objects afterwards uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with this I created um, a new folder here so that way it's it's completely different completely separate from what I've already created and I'm gonna close all of these out uh, yes I want to save that um, that'll still work um, I do have a cheat sheet open so I'm gonna, just gonna basically go off of that and explain what's going on um, so now I'm going to go to new PHP file and I'm gonna do database.class.php and 
anything that is its own class as a PHP uh, file, I, I like to put class in the name so that way I know it is a class and, and whatever the object is goes first. Um, if I'm doing an interface, um, then I'll do database.interface.php or something like that. Um, it's just a good methodology to follow. And uh, so I'll finish that. It starts my PHP code for me. And then I'm just going to do class database create my brackets and then I'm going to start creating all my variables. So I want all these to be private because I don't want anybody to go in and change those once it's been created and once the connection's already been set up. So I'm going to do private dollar, whoops, dollar sign host private dollar sign user and those of you who don't know um, what this is uh, related to um, host is the database uh, or the uh, the server that I'm connecting to. Usually it's local host, um, but you can specify an IP address. Uh, user is your database user that you're going to be using. Password is the password for that user. And then private DB name is the last one, and that one is your database name itself. Uh, the next piece is the whole singleton object that uh, that needs to get created. So I'm going to do private static dollar sign instance and this is the instance of the uh, of the database object itself. So it creates a, a instance of itself and then private oops, dollar sign connection and then private results Finally, private num rows, and these two uh, results is required. Num rows is not, and connection is, um, and connection stores the active connection that you have. So now, if I come over to here and create my private constructor, whoops, I'm not going to put anything in there. I just want to create the object when it gets created but I don't want anything to happen when it actually runs that constructor. So I'm not putting anything in there. Um, the next piece is the most important, and this is where the whole sing singleton object becomes a reality. So we'll do static, so that way you can call this method even though you haven't created an instance of the database object. And I know I'm going to run out of time. I'm actually going to try and get this get instance object done, and then I'm going to uh, start a new video. So we'll do static function, get instance, and it's going to check if there is no, in, if, oops, sorry, instance has not been set. So if, they, if it hasn't created an, uh, an instance of itself, then do this. And that is self instance is equal to new self. So it's creating it's it's basically running its own constructor and then after that we're going to return self dollar sign whoops dollar sign instance all right so i'm going to save that this video i'm going to stop it here in a few minutes but i'm going to explain this a little bit further so if it already has been created I'm just going to pass back whatever that value is of instance um, that's basically what a singleton is if it if the object already has been created, it's not going to create another one. It's just going to pass back what's already there. Um, this is a good way for uh, reducing resources that get or, or consume uh, resources, and it helps um, minimize the, the chance of running into um, issues with multiple database connections. So. Uh, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to jump into uh, the second part, so uh, stay tuned for that.